Hey guys, welcome back. Today on The Untidy Artist, we'll be making cold process soap. In this tutorial, I wanted to show you how I use mica to color my uh, soap and then I swirl it all in the same bowl called the In the Pot Swirl to get this gorgeous swirl in my soap. It was one of the easier swirls I started out with and I thought it would be fun to show you how I do it. So let's grab some supplies and get started. Now the first thing you're going to need obviously is your oils and your lye and I will have the recipe listed be below that I used in this tutorial. I've got this juicy apricot fragrance oil from Nurture Soap and it is one of my absolute favorites. It's just fresh and it's a little bit tart, it's not too sweet, and it smells just like apricots. And then I have my mica. I will be using Mango Tango Mica from Nurture Soap. It's this gorgeous orange color. I have Winter White, which is what I like to use instead of titanium dioxide. I find it easier to work with. I do use titanium dioxide sometimes, but I prefer the white mica. I've got Hollywood Pink Mica, also from Nurture Soap. And then I've got some almond oil, and I use that to mix with my micas. Um, and then I'll be using a teaspoon and a half of sodium lactate in my soap. This will help it be harder and easier to get out of the mold. And so I'm just taking, um, in this I just pour equal parts of the mica and the almond oil into my little plastic cup here. You'll wanna make sure that you stir it really well and that it's all mixed together completely. I did have someone ask me where I get these little cups. I actually bought them in a big bag from my grocery store. So I can see if I can find them online. I can post a link for that below. So I have my colors all mixed up. I'm going to check my lye water. It's at 80 degrees and I've got my oils there at 78 degrees. I do like to soap around 80 degrees, especially if I'm doing lots of swirls. It gives me a lot more time to work with the soap. So I'm gently pouring my lye water into my oils. I'm going to give it a gentle stir with my spatula just to get it to start mixing together. And I had already added my sodium lactate to my lye water so it was already mixed in there. Then I'm going to put my blender in, give it a few taps to get all the air bubbles out, and then I am going to continue to mix my soap together. I like to alternate between stirring it with my spatula and using my stick blender. With this, you do want it to get to a light trace. So you want it to emulsify so that the oils are mixed in with your lye water and it starts to get thicker, but you don't want it really thick. So I like to work slowly and when it's the right consistency, because we'll be able to do lots of fun swirls with this, I'm going to tap off my blender and I've already got my fragrance oil measured out. I like to use a 5% ratio and I'm just going to gently pour this into my soap batter and give it a nice stir with my spatula. I don't like really using the stick blender with my fragrance oils because you never know what your fragrance oil is going to do and if you want your soap to stay in a nice thin consistency for swirls, you wanna work slowly. So I added my fragrance oil. I've never had a problem with this fragrance oil at all. It is an absolute dream to work with. I'm going to pour off a little of my soap into two of the cups, and I'll be honest, I don't really measure exactly, and I also don't measure exactly with my mica. I just kind of start uh, gradually adding it in, stirring it, and adding a little bit more color if I want that color to be a little bit deeper. Now at this point I actually decided after I'd started mixing the color in that I wanted to color more of my soap batter. So I took my base and poured a little bit more into each of the cups and added a little bit more of the color. And then I took my white mica, my winter white, and I added that to the base of my soap to give me um, a white base for the orange and the pink to pop off of more. And once those are all stirred together, um, another little tool that I really like, I have this little mini whipper whisk thing that I got from Ikea. I believe it was about $3 and it really helps me to mix my colors together well. So once that's all nice and mixed together, I'm going to grab my mold. I got this off of Amazon. I will put a link to where I got it below. I believe it holds about two pounds. This is one of the first molds that I got and it has worked out really well for me, especially when I was first starting out in making soap. Now I'm going to grab my soap batter and we're going to put it in four different spots. We're gonna pour the soap in in four different spots at 12 o'clock and then three o'clock and then six o'clock and then nine o'clock. So if you were looking at a clock, you would start clockwise and pour the soap from a pretty high spot into those um, four different places. 
So then I grab my orange soap batter and I'm going to pour my soap in those same four spots. Then I'm going to grab my pink again and pour it in those same four spots and then I'm going to grab my orange again. You can see I'm leaving just a little bit in my cup, um, but by pouring it from this high spot, as it drops down, it's mixing into the other colors in the base of your soap. So you start to get these really, really pretty swirls. And I'm leaving a little bit of the orange in my cup. This will be for the top. And then I'm going to grab a spatula and I'm going to go around in a full circle and then down through the center. So around in a full circle and then down through the center. It is really tempting to keep stirring. Um, a good thing to note is the more you stir it, the more all of those colors will mix together and we want some really pretty swirls. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just pour my batter into my mold. Now where my batter was really thin, I was able to get some really um, light and wispy swirls in my soap, which I really liked. Then I'm gonna grab a spatula and I'm going to scoop out the rest of the soap that is in the little cups to decorate the top of my soap. And then one thing I really like to do when decorating the top of my soap is grabbing my leftover mica. So this is the mica we use to color our soap batter. And I'm going to put some little dabs of the pink mica on top of that line of orange soap we have. And then I'm going to do the orange mica on the pink soap. And this will kind of make those colors pop a little bit more. Then I'm gonna grab my bamboo skewer and I'm going to go back and forth kind of in a swirly zigzag um, to create some swirls on the top of the soap. You don't want to push the bamboo skewer down too far because we don't wanna mix the bottom soap together. We just wanna barely get that top layer. So I do um, from one angle and then I'm gonna go back and do it from the other angle. It is always really tempting to keep swirling because it looks so pretty, but I just want um, back and forth on this twice then I'm going to grab this blush rush glitter it's this iridescent light pink glitter and it is absolutely beautiful and I'm going to sprinkle it on top of my soap because I love glitter and everything with glitter is better plus I feel like it's fairy dust and then I give it a spray with my rubbing alcohol and then I'm going to let it set up overnight I like to put mine in the fridge to set up um, it just seems to work for me better and once it is all set, I'm going to remove it from my mold and slice it. And this is my awesome Bud's Woodshop cutter and I will post a link for that below. But you can see how different each piece turns out on the different swirls with the white and the pink and the orange. And because my batter was so thin, you can see that those swirls are really wispy and thin. So if you wanted thicker swirls that um, were a little bit more defined, you'd want your batter to be a little bit thicker. And this is an in the pot swirl. One thing I really wanted to do when I started making soap, so many things confused me, and I wanted to do some soap tutorials to kind of show you what I learned and hopefully give you some good tips if you're just starting out making soap. And if you are a professional soap maker, um, I hope you liked this tutorial and I would love any tips you might have in the comments below. And that's it guys, you're all set. Make sure you let your soap cure for four to six weeks and you're good to go. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments or questions, please post those below. If you'd like to check out more soap tutorials, you can do that on my YouTube channel, Untidy Artist, or on my website, uh, untidyartist.com. Um, give this a thumbs up if you liked it. And for all of my fairy fans, I do have some fairy tutorials coming very soon. So stay tuned and we'll see you guys next time.